Hello, good evening and welcome to Joy News Prime with me, Faustina Safaway, home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Coming up, security beefed up along Ghana's borders with Cote d'Ivoire following intelligence about a planned terrorist attack during the Africa Cup of Nations. Also, fatal road collision involving the convoy of wife of the Vice President Samra Baumia claims one life. And later in the bulletin, MP for Medina Francis Xavier Susu presents a new bill in Parliament proposing amendments to the Criminal and Other Offences Act 1960, introducing community service and bond of good behaviour as alternatives to conventional custodial sentencing. The bulletin is live on DSTV Channel 421 and GoTV Channel 125, where your home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. Please. Stay for details. Thanks for choosing us. Now, information available to join us indicates that security has been intensified on Ghana's borders to Cote d'Ivoire following intelligence about a planned terrorist attack during the African Cup of Nations. The African Cup of Nations started yesterday and is expected to end on the 11th of February. Ghana is expected to play Cape Verde later today at 8 p.m. And my colleague Nabila Muftal is in La Côte d'Ivoire. He joins us on Zoom with details. Muftal, tell us about this intelligence we are picking. Why is there even a need for security to be beefed up along our coast? Well, one of the major things that we often get during major competitions like the African Cup of Nations is um, the badness, often willing to distract the attention of everyone and take the headlines of, of major events like this. So it is uh, something that has happened before. I remember during the 2010 African Cup of Nations, the timbers of um, Togo was attacked. So. These are quite common stories that we often hear during every major African Cup of Nations. And um, if such intelligence came to the attention of security, um, they, they have to provide a solution uh, in terms of curbing whatever is, is likely to happen. So on our way here to Abidjan for the African Cup of Nations, uh, security, especially along the Elubu border, was quite tight. Where, um, security actually told us that they were not going to allow us to move alone until we had police escort. So um, along the line, the police escort came and um, um, when we were on our way, uh, we got to a point and they even beefed up more security. The police escort was increased to two cars. We had soldiers also join us on the road. I think all these were, were done to ensure that we had uh, a smooth trip to Abidjan to do our work and we don't have the bad enough to come out there and take center stage uh, in the African Cup of Nations. It's a tournament that is supposed to bring goodwill to the people of Cote d'Ivoire and anything possible that would be done by the government of the country to ensure that everyone participates in this event and lives peacefully is going to be done. And in fact, I was there more of the arrowhead of the journalists who were coming from Ghana. And one of the privileges I, I had was the fact that the security actually told me that there are badness on the road and they were not going to allow us to move. I remember um, when we were delayed for about two hours, I raised concerns. I told the security that if traveling during daylight, you claim is dangerous, then why keep us to the extent that we are losing daylight? We needed to move. And he told me that if we, he allows us to move, he was going to lose his job because there are bad guys on the road and the bad guys could attack us and put again through our highest. In fact, the French were doing all doing we, 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 so that we can all air travel through because they were speaking just French and it was difficult to actually have an understanding and grasp all the things that they were telling us. But those who could speak broken English made us understand that the road wasn't safe for us to go alone. And we needed to wait for security. The security came and drove us safely to our destination. Well, right now you're at Abidjan. What's the mood like? Especially because just yesterday was the opening of the official games. And then we know Ghana is playing later today at 8 p.m. What's the mood like there? It's been quite positive. I've interacted with many of my colleagues. I've interacted with a couple of supporters. And some of them 
are pessimistic and others are optimistic. And you would always expect that when a national team is participating in a tournament, those who actually feel that the team has not done well in recent times will be pessimistic about what the team can deliver later tonight. And um, you will have to go back to 2019 to record a win for Ghana in participating in the African Cup of Nations. And that came against Guinea-Bissau in 2019. Uh, it was a win that secured qualification to a round of 16 where Ghana met Tunisia and was knocked out. In the next tournament that happened in 2021, the country did not win. So in about six matches played so far in the tournament, the Black Star has won just one. So uh, people who have this feeling that the national team of late has become a national team that produces amateur performances at stages like this will always be pessimistic about what the team can do. And again, you look at a national team under Chris Hilton, a national team that we expected Chris Hilton to come and change his fortunes. It continues to look like that national team we saw under previous coaches, that same hit and run national team that does not provide any sort of confidence for any Ghanaian. So those who are pessimistic about the Black Stars' fortunes tonight have every reason to be pessimistic. But there are others too who are also optimistic. There are those who actually believe that the moment Ghanaians do not expect much from the Black Stars, this is the moment that they might just rise to deliver. And I do also believe that Chris Hilton and his boys will rise to the occasion tonight because considering the performances we witnessed in Cameroon last year, if they are to produce another draft of feckless performance like we saw against Central African Republic and Com uh, Com Comoros, it could be a tough knock for the Black Stars to crack against Cabo Verde because this Cabo Verde side, they've improved so much so that they were even able to secure wins in the World Cup qualifiers against the last of South Africa. So it is a difficult, difficult game for Ghana tonight. And I can understand the mixed feelings among the Ghanaian journalists and supporters who are here to support the national team. Just maybe it is a night Chris Hilton and his boys will answer the questions we've had in our minds since he took over the job uh, last year. Just maybe it may be a night that we would say Chris Hilton and his technical team were never the people who should have been handed the Black Stars coaching job. Mm, thank you so much, Mr. I will be monitoring that game later on at 8 p.m. and we'll be coming to you also for all the juicy updates. Well, in anticipation of Ghana's inaugural Group B match against Kim Verde in the African tournament, Black Stars coach Chris Hilton addressed the media in a press conference earlier today. While maintaining secrecy about the team's formation strategy, he confidently affirmed that the squad is ready for the tournament ahead. My um, selection process is, is exactly the same um, for the goalkeeper than it is for uh, every other player. There is always a, a process that, um, that, that is taken. And we um, ultimately, as head coach, um, I am the person that makes the final decision. Um, but of course I have a coaching staff with me, including a goalkeeping coach, if we are talking specifically about, about the goalkeeping area. Uh, and in these conversations and analyses that, that take place, it's where we make choices on starting, coming off the bench, starting the next game. Um, and this is normal. This is normal in, in every team. And the, these are normal processes that last time you were questioned on that in Kumasi you said you thought you you actually wanted one of the players to be a bit more progressive we saw in the World Cup qualifiers and the recent friendly that probably they are not getting that instruction from you what's going to be different versus Cape Verde a team probably we are more fancied to play more explosive or expansive football what is going to change there is it going to be the same or we'll see something different well, I, uh, I, one thing I, I know and understand is that you, you certainly wouldn't expect me to uh, give away to you um, a team or even a team plan uh, going into the game. I have uh, sat, uh, of course, at the end of all of our uh, press conferences and addressed um, our Ghanaian press after uh, all of the games and and been asked uh, similar questions and and uh, all I can do is give what I think are honest and uh, open uh, answers and 
Yes, there have been games where we have uh, played what you would perceive as two um, defensive type players in. Well, Black Stars captain Andre Dede, you pledged the team's unwavering commitment, promising to give their all, taking each game day by day with a focused and dedicated approach. It's a huge tournament for us um, as a team. I think, uh, as you said, the last tournament was, was very difficult, but being in a lot of tournaments, I think there were a lot of things that happened for the tournament to go that way. But we need to learn from it and make sure that it doesn't happen again, whether it's on the pitch or, or off the pitch. But yes, it's true that it's my eighth, eighth AFCON. And then um, I've been sitting here a few times for a few years now. And the ambition hasn't changed. Since I started from day one, from my first half in 2008, I've always had the ambition to, to, to make sure that we are able to, to bring the trophy home one day. We will always come with that ambition. We can't promise it. What we can do is make sure that we give everything that we can, day by day, game by game, take our time, We've seen a lot of teams win this tournament without people expecting them to win. We've seen teams that were expected to win who has won it. But there's one thing that I know is in this tournament you can't predict anything. And if you can't predict anything, then the doors are open for, for everyone. And when the doors are open, we need to slide in. We don't have to give no chances. And I believe that the squad is determined and the ambition is to win the next game. And from there we'll see how we take it to the next one. Away from the Afghan now, one person has died in a road crash involving the convoy of Samira Baumia, wife of the Vice President, Dr. Baumia. Samira is said to be, quote, doing well and unhurt in the Saturday's accident which occurred at Ohini in Kwanta, a village in the Ejizudrabe municipality of the Ashanti region on the Accra Kumasi Highway. The multi vehicle accident involved the collision of two Toyota Land Cruisers a Mercedes-Benz car, a Sprinter-Benz bus. The vice presidency has released a statement, and the statement is currently on your screens right now. It reads, It is with deep sorrow that I announce the death of Mumuni Fuseni, a staff in my office. He died yesterday from an accident involving a vehicle in the convoy of the second lady, Hajia, Hajia Samira Baumia. And she is... Well, he died yesterday from an accident involving a vehicle in the convoy of the second lady, Hajia, Hajia Samira Fuseni, was a hard-working member of the close protection unit. Now, he has since been buried according to Islamic traditions. My condolences to the family and friends. May Allah forgive Fuseni's shortcomings and grant him dana. A well, member of parliament for Medina, Francis Xavier Kojosusu, has initiated a new bill in parliament to amend the Criminal and Other Offences Act 1960 to introduce community service and bond of good behaviour as alternatives to the traditional custodial sentence and, and fines for petty crimes generally referred to as misdemeanors. So the Criminal and Other Offences Procedure Amendment Bill 2023 uh, seeks to introduce some five very, very critical amendments. Five critical amendments. Uh, the first amendment is to uh, amend section 148 of Act 30 uh, so that we can introduce a regime that increases the penalty for compensation. Uh, it's obvious that the courts do not resort to this section because we only have the penalty as being equivalent to 500 penalty units. 
So if uh, people who commit misdemeanors or petty offenses are asked to pay compensation, uh, it's most likely that they'll be paying just 500 penalty units. For that reason, uh, maybe the court do not resort mostly to that. So the bill seeks to, in to increase the penalty units to 1,000 penalty units. 1,000 penalty units. That way, the court can resort to compensation as a means of uh, alternative sentencing. Then section uh, 294 is also being amended. Currently, when you look at the section 294, uh, as in the penalties available when a person commits misdemeanor, it's only custodial sentences or they are fines. And so by this amendment, I am seeking that we would introduce community service and bond of good behavior. What this means is that anytime a person is convicted of a petty offense, like somebody has stolen goat or cow or uh, has gone to steal um, tubers of yam, and the court is wondering what type of offense, uh, what type of penalty to impose when the person is convicted, the court has an option to now impose a community service or a bond of good behavior. And then also section nine, uh, 294A, uh, which is a new introduction, is seeking to impose duties on judges when they are imposing sentences. What this means is that when a judge is faced with a situation where he, has petty, uh, he or she has petty offenses, uh, who have been a, a petty offender who has been convicted, the judge would have to, as a matter of law, first consider non custodial sentence before imposing a fine or a custodial sentence. So, that is a new obligation the law is imposing. Of course, the law is seeking to also impose an obligation on the Minister for Interior by a legislative instrument to prescribe the, the processes of community, to prescribe the processes. Of community uh, the community sentences on the 20th of December 2023 um, I caused to be sent to the office of the um, clerk to Parliament of the Republic of Ghana a new bill uh, which is called the community sentencing bill and uh, this bill is a very very crucial bill because uh, when you consider the kind of congestions that we have at the prisons of Ghana today and the fact that in the current Act 30, which is the Criminal and Other Offenses Procedure Act uh, 1960 or 30, uh, we have some forms of uh, non-custodial sentences or alternative sentences, particularly for what we know as the petty offenses or petty crimes. And yet the courts have not uh, made good use of these uh, uh, alternative sentences. So it is very important that we have a very clear uh, law that Let's head now to the Adan East District where inadequate infrastructure at Adan Technical School in the district is adversely affecting the intake of freshmen as the school grapples to find space for 900 new students. Headmistress Evelyn Azansu revealed this during the donation of student beds with mattresses to the educational institution by Member of Parliament for Adan Constituency, Comfort Doyogansa. My colleague Carlos Caloni has more in the following report. Despite Adan Technical School requesting space for 580 students this year, the demand for admission has already reached almost 900. Headmistress Evelyn Azansu informed Joy News that they have only one classroom for the 900 students as inadequate infrastructure continues to hinder effective teaching and learning. This year, after giving the classrooms to second and third years, we have only one classroom left for first years in the and then you know we we asked for 580 but now we are hitting almost 900 and where to put them is a challenge having one classroom for first years how are we going where are we going to put them you see so those are the challenges that we have and the number of furniture that we have to will not cater for even the continuing students and then the freshers that are coming you see the 18 unit classroom block there rainstorm has taken it off we wrote letters severally 
for government to come and then the contractor to come to our aid, but still, nothing has been done. And we have a three unit, three classrooms there. At least when roofed, it can ease the uh, challenge for us a little, but that one too, so it's standing without any uh, uh, attempt to re-roof it for us. We are not able to contain the numbers that are coming, because most people wanted to come to Adan Technical Institute, but because of the challenges we have on the ground, we cannot take more than we can. At Adan Senior High School, students and school authorities lament inadequate beds and running water as major challenges requiring urgent attention. They're not having enough beds in the dormitory, and some of them used to sleep on bare floors and wake up in the morning. They get up the beds at one place and then leave for school. And apart from the beds, we also face the water challenges. As an interim measure, MP for Adan Comfort Doyo Ganza, through the support of the German government, has donated a number of mattresses and dual student beds to Adan Technical and Senior High Schools. In all, we have 36, so we have sent, uh, we have 56, we have sent 20 to other school, which is Adan Technical, and we have brought 20 to Adan Senior High. And the health sector too, we have given them 10. We have over 3,000 students who are to use water to bath, which no water tanker can serve them. But we have a river just across the street. So if we get a pumping machine, if we get a pumping machine that can pump water from the river to this side, it's a clean water. They can use it for the high shores, like, like washing and bathing. That can solve a lot of problems for us. District Chief Executive for the area, Sarah Dubaki Pobi, revealed that interventions have been included in the Assembly's 2024 budget to address the infrastructure challenges facing the schools. I think in 2024 budget, we have put in rehabilitation of schools. We have decided we are not going to build any more schools, but rehabilitate the, those that we have. So that's a stance that we've put in, in place. I think Ada Technical is part of our budget that we did this year. And we are going to help renovate everything that they have there. But with the classes that they are saying, we've also gone to get fun to also plead with them to see in their budget if they can give us additional classrooms for them to also have their way to at least admit more students in the school. The MP also supported students affected by the floods caused by the spillage of the Akosumbo Dam at Pediatokope with various cash amounts and some groceries, remaining resolute in collaborating with stakeholders towards the socio-economic development of Adan resident. Carlos Caloni, Joy News, Adan. Let's head up north now. Faced with constant shortage of food and other basic needs, inmates of Gambaga, which camp in the northeast region, are forced to work in farmlands as laborers and do other menial jobs to feed themselves and their families. Lia Sotanko has more in this report. The witch camp, now called the Gambaga Resettlement Home in the East Mampresi Municipality of the North East Region, is a sanctuary for about 80 elderly women and counting who have been falsely accused of being witches and violently banished from their home villages. These women, when banished, are not allowed to take with them any property whatsoever, so they end up arriving in this camp with nothing. Sometimes they are even brought either half naked or partially dead from the brutalities and tortures they are subjected to. Here in the camp, they depend solely on donations from individuals and organizations, but as these donations are almost inadequate, the elderly women are forced to engage in farm labor to earn their daily incomes. Others engage in dishwashing, floor cleaning and collecting of firewood for sale to survive. As part of the measures to address the challenges, the camp authorities identify and train some of the inmates in life skills ventures such as bees and soap making. However, due to the lack of resources, the inmates are unable to make good use of their craft and the opportunity resulting in their poor state of living conditions in the camp. In response, an insurance firm, My Life Insurance Company Limited, has come to the aid of the camp 
by donating an amount of 10,000 Ghana cities to be used as a working capital for the emails to invest in their craft. It was part of our plan to come support them with some working capital. Chief Executive Officer of the company, Kwekui Ebu Esuama, said the donation aimed to improve the living conditions of the emails. Because when we came, we saw they do certain things, beads and then soap and detergents, and all they needed was capital. So the purpose is to uh, give them some working capital. And we believe that as they produce and make profit, they'll be able to buy a few things for themselves and their lives will improve. The chief executive officer appealed to the management of the camp to put the donation to good use whilst pledging more support if the money was utilized appropriately. Take good care of the money, make sure it goes into the purpose for which it was given. And once we see improvement, we will continuously support them so that our people here the women would have a better life. Receiving the donation for and on behalf of the image, the camp coordinator, Reverend Gladys, said the donation has come in handy and thanked the insurance company for the generous gift. It will help to improve their living condition and to help them because sometimes they have a food but money to purchase ingredients to prepare the food is another thing. So if we are able to get good market and sell well, then we get that money at the end of every month, at least if we give them the food, we add them some 2020 cities so that it will help them. And 20 cities, there are about 80 of them. We have to gather about 1,600 every month so that we can uh, help them to um, get a good meal. Chief Executive Officer also utilized the opportunity to announce the presence of My Life Insurance Company Limited in the Northeast region. Ours is to come down to the level where the poorest in a nation can buy. So once I mean we have peace and we can go about doing our work, um, live business would also go on. And uh, fortunately, we are going to engage the youth of the community who would uh, sell insurance and that is also going to contribute to the youth within the community. From Gambaga, Ilyas Sutanko reporting for Joy News. Well, that's it for Joy News Prime. My name is Faustina Safa. Wish the Blacksters all the best in their game. Coming up at 8 p.m., we'll be giving you full coverage here on the Joy News channel. Up next is the pro with MFA Apal. You stay tuned in.